あそこは鹿の通り道なんだえグランピング場の予定地鹿の水場なんだもう説明してくれるって言うんだからまずは聞こうや汚染って言ったって都会の水よりずっと綺麗ですよ Tell us about a top movie. Evil Does Not Exist, which is a new film from Raisuki、uh, Hamaguchi, who made Drive My Car, which remember we spoke about before. This won the jury prize, the grand jury prize at Venice, and it won Best Film at the London Film Festival last year. It's set in a forest village in ha- Arasawa. Takumi lives with his young daughter, Hannah. He takes care of odd jobs for locals. He chops wood. He gets pristine water from the wells that he takes to them. It seems like an Eden like existence. It's kind of like an eco paradise. Deer pass through this village that they live in. Then a Tokyo company called Play Mode t u r n up, announcing that they have plans for a glamping site. Glamping being. Well, of course, actually, that's glamorous what they're doing. Yeah, glamorous. Is it glam? Yes, he's glamorous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fun. And as part of a sort of PR exercise, they send two representatives to liaise with the community, meaning that they put on a sort of demonstration in which they put on display about how great the site is going to be and all the things that it will do for the community. But it very soon becomes clear that play mode, surprise, surprise, have no idea. About the fragile ecosystem into which they are about to sort of bulldoze their way. Their water cleansing system, sewage system, is completely inadequate. It will poison the water in the wells. Their camp is on a, a deer trail and it will put people, you know, in the way of the deer, and that's not good for either the people or the deer.、And、the film opens with an image of a young child walking through woods, and because of the title, because the title is Evil Does Not Exist, you get the sense that something. Terrible is coming. You're not quite sure what. Apparently, the film began life as a 30 minute short, which was going to have live music by Eko Shibashi. Now, if you remember, she did the score for Drive My Car, which was my favorite score of the year that that film came out. It's absolutely wonderful. I still listen to that soundtrack album all the time. That short then grew into a feature in which it has you know, dialogue and plot. It's very, very enigmatic. On the one hand, it's about It's about a culture clash. It's about people who live in the woods and people from play mode from the town coming into the woods. And they don't want the townies coming in. But meanwhile, nobody is exactly what they seem. I mean, the townies are actually quite seduced by this woodland existence. And one of the people who's meant to be there from play mode to say, this is how we're going to you know, set up the glamping site starts to think, well, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe what I want to do is live in the woods and become a caretaker in, in, in the woods. There's also the central character who. Is entirely good and entirely virtuous and who does the wood chopping and the water gathering. And yet, one of the things that he does is forget to pick up the kid from school on a fairly regular basis. I think what the film is about is it seems to me that it is a parable about the balance of nature, that if something new arrives within nature, something else must move to take its place. It has a finale that is as enigmatic as anything I've seen since the end of 2001. It's not that you'll end up arguing about what, what happened means. It's that you'll probably end up arguing about what happened because it's designed very specifically that you just can't quite tell what's going on. What is going on? Well, it is a film of which you will want to come out and afterwards have a drink with your friends and talk about、okay. what it means. I mean, I think some people will find it mesmerizing. Occasionally the, pay, I mean, occasionally, the pace is slower than the service at the Hoxton Grill. I mean, it's like it is absolutely a kind of, you know, just look at this image and look at this image and then look at this image a little bit more. But I was thinking about, you know, what does the title mean? And I think that evil does not exist is about that we exist in a limbo between good and bad. It's not that there is good and bad, there is just the shades of everything in between. And as you watch the. As you watch these characters, you realize that everything you think about each one of them is immediately simplified by your assumptions. And then as you watch the drama, you start to understand that each one of them has all these different qualities within them. And that it isn't just a binary opposition between, on the one hand, there's the evil townies, on the other hand, there's the people that live in the forests. At one point, there's a very interesting discussion about, well, these townies are coming in and they don't live here and they're, they're not from here and they don't know the customs. And one of the locals says, well, we're all from somewhere else. We all came in from somewhere else as well. So it's a film of questions, not answers. 
I found it entrancing. I mean, I, I was absolutely mesmerised by it. And I have to say, the last five minutes of it have stuck with me, although I still am not quite sure what's happening or why it stuck with me. And the music's beautiful. But that's what you'd expect from Eko Shibashi. And it is very, very enigmatic. And it requires a certain kind of patience. It's sort of ambient in its pacing, but I thought it was very, very well worth your time. Evil does not, not exist. exist. Okay.